1901, a corpse was found in Sycamore Terrace in York, and after analysis, it was discovered that it was from 1600 years ago. The bodies seemed to be a young woman in their 20s of North African descent. She was found with bangles and elaborate jewellery on her carcass. Because of all her bangles and jewellery, she was thought to be rich. She had words inscribed on her bone saying, Hail sister, may you live in God. How she got to York is a mystery and no one knows. However, as filmmakers, we're going to try telling you her story. The researchers hadn't found out her name, but we are going to call her Aisha. She could have come from the northern Algerian village Djelfa. We have interpreted that she had a lot of family and friends and she had a great, rather fun life. But her father, who was a rich guy and wanted Aisha to get married to a man of his choice, so he had shipped her 6,000 miles away to York in England. Aisha took a boat which would have taken several weeks, but in modern day it can be done in just 12 hours and 54 minutes from Algeria to York. She left all her family and friends and the life she knew in Algeria on her adventure, but in her heart Aisha didn't want to leave her home. Aisha arrives at York. She is devastated by the gloomy weather and she is already missing Algeria. She is picked up by a carriage to take her. On her way, she sees Market selling all kinds of strange fruits and veg. On her way, she sees horrible, unclean rivers and ruins, but something that attracts her was the castles known as the Three Peaks. Soon she arrives at her fiancé's house. When she arrived, Edward is shocked at the North African girl's beauty. Edward tells Aisha to come in and helps her with her bags and belongings. As soon as they walked in, there was a huge wooden chandelier. The best quality chairs that were very comfortable, and when she walked into her room, she was in awe. It may not have been like her own room in Algeria, but it had a jewellery table, a very big bed, just for her, so she adjusted. husband to be let her unpack and settle in, but it was a strange world. Aisha finished unpacking her belongings and she headed out for dinner. She sat down silently and ate, not being used to this atmosphere. When she finished, she politely got up and went to her room. Aisha sat down at her jewellery table and started taking off her trinkets, bangles, earrings and all the other jewellery she had on. She made her way into bed and fell asleep. The next morning Aisha felt bad. She felt as if she was going to throw up or even pass out. She called for Edward who came in running. He asked what was wrong and she explained how she was feeling. Soon then, Edward set off to the medicine market to get everything she needs. Later that day, Aisha was sitting in her bed, and soon then a parcel arrived. Since nobody was at home, she pulled herself out of bed and collected the parcel. With a shocked face, she saw it was delivered to her, and so she walked back up to her room and opened it. It was from her sister, Amara. She had sent Aisha a pair of anklets, which she immediately put on. As soon as she put them on, she knew she had to send a letter back to her sister. And so she wrote and wrote until Edward was back. Edward came running in with the medicine and doctor that he spent hours to find. The doctor had told them that Aisha didn't have very long, and the cause was all the different things in York and Algeria. The doctor has also said it was mainly caused by the food difference and that we couldn't fix it. 
Ed was crying and Aisha was crying. The doctor took his leave and Aisha told Edward that her last wish was to see her sister. Edward did everything he could to get her and he successfully did that but not in time. As soon as they arrived, sadly she was gone. burst into tears, she went closer to Aisha, which is when she saw something in her hand. It was a letter and a bone, not Aisha's bone. She first read the letter, which just made her cry even more. She calmed down and read the inscription on the bone, which said, Hail sister, may you live in God.